Elon Musk had already warned, batteries will be the key to everything. And wasn't he right? In 2026, the buzz surrounding Tesla's new aluminum ion battery is even making skeptics' hair stand on end. The reason is simple. This technology promises to reduce charging time for electric cars by up to 70% and push range to levels that, until recently, seemed like science fiction. But what's really causing a stir is the idea that, with it, the long-awaited Model 2, the popular Tesla, could finally become a reality for less than $25,000. A proposition too tempting to ignore, especially in a world thirsty for clean and accessible mobility. The magic of aluminum ion technology lies in its speed. While traditional batteries require patience when charging, this innovation promises a recharge almost as fast as filling up a gasoline car. And that's no exaggeration. Tesla is exploring microstructures and thermal conductivities that transform how energy is absorbed. This means less time stopped at the charger and more time on the road. Of course, these promises have conditions. Climate, charger type, driving style, but even the average scenarios already surpass what we have today. The leap is brutal. Another masterstroke lies in energy density. With more energy occupying less space, Tesla can assemble smaller and lighter vehicles without sacrificing range. And guess what that generates? Reduced production costs. Everything becomes simpler. Fewer components, less weight, less wear and tear. Not to mention the durability of aluminum ion, which withstands extreme cycles without losing performance, making it an almost timeless solution. It's as if the car is challenging you. You can use me as much as you want. I can take it. Now, of course, all this chemical revolution needs to meet the reality of factories. And that's where the real challenge lies. Producing on a large scale, maintaining quality, and avoiding logistical bottlenecks are still Tesla's biggest challenges. The Model 2 can't just be a stage promise. It needs to roll off the assembly line with absurd efficiency, or it will become an urban legend. The question is no longer if aluminum ion will change the game, but when it will become a consolidated standard instead of a technical rarity. Elon knows this better than anyone, and perhaps that's why Tesla's project is focused on modularity, batteries that adapt to different models and situations without depending on a unique architecture. This allows factories on different continents to produce flexibly, scaling the Model 2 without the logistical nightmares that marked the pandemic. Tesla wants to repeat the feat of the Model 3, but now targeting the public that never thought it was possible to own their own electric car. It's a bold vision, but the market is more than ready. Competitors are playing catch-up, but few have the vertical dominance that Tesla has built. And with the aluminum ion battery, the game changes. It's safer, cheaper, and less dependent on lithium, a material that has faced environmental criticism and bizarre price fluctuations. With aluminum, which is abundant and recyclable, Tesla reduces its vulnerability and also gains a compelling green argument. The stakes are huge, but so is the potential return. Imagine a car that charges in minutes, costs less than a used sedan, and requires almost no maintenance for a decade. That's the package the Model 2 can offer. And at the heart of this package, pulsing like a next-generation energy brain, is the aluminum ion battery. There's still much to be tested, validated and scaled, but the feeling is clear. We are witnessing the birth of a technology that could, in fact, make electric cars dominant on the planet. The conversation inevitably moves to a point that many people ignore in their initial enthusiasm. Not every Tesla will simply wake up one day ready to receive an aluminum ion battery. In 2026, with this technology finally knocking on the consumer's door, the uncomfortable but necessary question arises. Is it possible to upgrade older models, or is this a privilege reserved for newer cars? The answer is not a simple yes or no. It involves architecture, software, cooling, and above all, 
decisions made by Tesla years ago, when no one imagined that this technology would reach the market so quickly. Models manufactured from 2021 onwards have an almost effortless advantage. These cars were born with smarter standardization, both in terms of mounting points and cooling systems and electrical wiring. This means that, in many cases, the battery can be removed and replaced without cutting, welding, or traumatic adaptations. A certified technician basically unscrews, fits the new assembly, and seals everything again. It's the closest thing to what can be called a direct replacement, something that until recently seemed impossible in the world of electric cars. When we look at models from 2018 to 2020, the story changes. These vehicles still use less flexible architectures with bonded batteries, specific thermal channels, and management logic designed exclusively for lithium. This is where the famous auxiliary BMS comes in an intermediate electronic brain that translates the language of the aluminum ion battery to the car. It adjusts voltages, charging curves, and responses in real time, ensuring that everything works without putting the system at risk. It works, but requires caution. For older models, especially those prior to 2017, the recommendation for 2026 is clear. Even if it sounds harsh, it's generally not worth it. The cost rises quickly, the risks increase, and the chance of compromising the car's warranty or reliability becomes too great. It's not that it's technically impossible, but the effort required ends up negating the benefits. It's the kind of decision where common sense prevails over technological enthusiasm. Speaking of cost, retrofitting isn't cheap, but it's also not the monster many imagine. A typical package, around 60 kilowatt, can cost close to $5,000, varying according to labor, taxes, additional modules, and necessary thermal adjustments. For some owners, this seems like a lot. For others, it's a bargain considering the gains in faster charging, greater range, and extended vehicle lifespan. It all depends on usage patterns and long-term expectations. The most delicate aspect of this adaptation lies in the electrical behavior of the aluminum ion battery. It operates at different nominal voltages and responds differently during acceleration and recharging. Without a well-tuned multi-chemistry management system, the car simply doesn't understand what's happening. Therefore, software updates and fine-tuned calibration become as important as the physical component itself. In some cases, a simple OTA update is enough to make the car learn to handle the new battery within the limits of the existing hardware. Another detail that rarely appears in advertisements is the vehicle's downtime. A well-done retrofit doesn't happen in an afternoon. On average, it takes one to three days in the workshop, followed by validation tests, diagnostics, and minor adjustments. It's not something improvised. Serious workshops work with detailed checklists evaluating mounting points, coolant circulation, cable reach, and software compatibility before even accepting the job. The idea that ultra-fast batteries will solve all our problems seems like magic until you face the practical limits. By 2026, many people will have heard that aluminum ion batteries can charge up to six times faster than traditional lithium and even travel a thousand miles in some scenarios. But then, reality sets in. These numbers only make sense in controlled environments, with moderate temperatures, powerful chargers, and smooth operation. In everyday use, what matters most is thermal control, because when the battery overheats, performance suffers, and safety becomes a concern. That's why Tesla developed a completely different cooling system for its aluminum-ion battery packs. Instead of just conventional cold plates, they use liquid microchips and active heat pipes that precisely distribute the temperature throughout the assembly. Imagine something similar to the cooling system of a gaming computer, only on a much larger scale. This allows the battery to withstand high loads without melting internally or losing efficiency, which would be a disaster in any electric vehicle. In cars launched after 2020, this system is already partially integrated, 
which facilitates retrofitting and adapting to the new battery. The internal architecture already provides for additional thermal sensors and specific cooling zones. But in older models, things get complicated. They weren't designed for this level of thermal demand, so adapting requires deep revisions to the cooling system, and that makes everything more expensive. Literally, if not well planned, the car may end up with worse performance than before the change. Heat also affects charging time. The hotter the environment or the battery itself, the more the system limits the power input to protect the components. This phenomenon is called tapering, and it frustrates many people. A person sees that the car promised to charge in 10 minutes, but is there waiting 40 because the charger had to hold back the power to avoid frying the battery? This type of situation is increasingly discussed in user forums and technical groups because it has become a common source of frustration. Therefore, Tesla has started to release realistic usage scenarios. It's no longer just that promise on paper of a thousand miles on a single charge. Now, there's a commitment to showing how factors like weather, average speed, road type, and driving style directly impact battery performance. They are using visual matrices, simulators, and even apps that pre-diagnose your region, showing how long it would actually take you to charge on a typical day. The big breakthrough, however, lies in how the car handles all of this on its own. Tesla's multi-chemistry management system analyzes the temperature, voltage, and response of the modules in real time, and dynamically adapts charging and discharging. It's as if the car had an electronics engineer inside, constantly recalibrating everything to maintain the ideal balance. This is what really makes the difference, because it protects the system and avoids unpleasant surprises, such as premature loss of range or thermal shutdowns. Many people don't realize it, but it's precisely this intelligence that makes retrofitting viable in newer models. Without this electronic brain, it would be like trying to put a Formula One engine in a streetcar. It might work, but it won't last, and it will probably break other parts along the way. That's why, even in 2026, Tesla's recommendation remains. Only retrofit if the thermal system and the BMS are 100% compatible with the new chemistry. Otherwise, the risk isn't worth it. The promise of a car that charges in minutes and travels hundreds of kilometers is only fulfilled if the energy is there, ready to be delivered. But in 2026, the reality is that many regions still lack sufficient electrical infrastructure to keep pace with the speed at which Tesla is evolving its batteries. And that's where megapacks come in. Those silent giants hidden behind the scenes of charging stations and urban substations. They act as backup batteries for the electrical grid itself absorbing energy during periods of low demand and returning it during peak times, like electric lungs. This type of megascale storage allows for something ingenious, maintaining charging performance even when everyone is plugging in their cars at six in the afternoon. Instead of overloading the grid, the system simply begins to unload its own accumulated stocks from hours earlier. The driver doesn't notice, but behind the scenes, a whole dance of megawatts is happening silently. This helps keep electricity bills under control and prevents cities from having to invest billions in grid expansion just to cope with peak hours. But it doesn't stop there. Tesla has also been investing in home and community solutions, creating a true smart energy ecosystem. Homes equipped with solar panels, power wall batteries, and smart scheduling chargers can operate almost autonomously. During times when energy is cheaper, usually between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m., the car is charged automatically, without the user having to do anything. This is the famous TOU, Time of Use Tariff, which encourages smart habits with savings of up to 60%. These solutions are becoming common in high-end residential developments, but they are also starting to appear in working-class neighborhoods with incentive programs. The idea is that even communities with fragile infrastructure can benefit by sharing storage and alternating charging times to avoid the 7 p.m. cliff. 
That moment when everyone arrives home and connects their cars at the same time, crashing the network. With a little organization and a community megapack, this collapse is avoided. Another interesting point is how Tesla is using artificial intelligence to predict the energy consumption of entire neighborhoods. This allows them to adjust car charging almost invisibly. A car that arrives home at 6 p.m. can start charging only at 2 a.m. without the owner noticing, ensuring savings and stability for the system. It's the perfect combination of predictive technology and energy management. And all of this is being tested on a micro scale before being replicated in entire cities. But the key factor in this structure is still education. Tesla has been investing in apps and simple interfaces that show users the real impact of their energy decisions. Instead of technical graphs, people see how much money they saved by charging outside of peak hours or how the Megapack saved their charging time during a blackout. It's a way to bring the average consumer closer to a system that was previously restricted to engineers and dealership technicians. And that changes everything. It is at this intersection between technology and the domestic economy that strategies such as TOU, time of use, and V2G, vehicle to grid, come into play, which by 2026 are no longer just concepts for enthusiasts, they have become practical tools for any Tesla owner who wants to pay less on their electricity bill or guarantee energy in emergency situations. TOU, for example, allows the car to charge automatically during times when energy is cheaper, generally between 2 and 5 in the morning. It may seem like a detail, but the impact at the end of the month is real. Savings can exceed 60% in some regions, depending on the local tariff. This automation came with something many people didn't expect, a new energy awareness. Tesla's own apps show comparisons between old and current bills, revealing how much was saved simply by changing charging times. This created a spontaneous educational effect. Instead of memorizing technical numbers, the user sees colorful graphs and messages like, you saved enough to pay for two dinners this month. It's simple, direct, and extremely effective in creating new habits. Now, V2G comes in as a powerful wild card. With it, the car not only consumes energy, but also returns it to the house or the electrical grid when necessary. During a power outage, for example, it can power a refrigerator, a router, essential lights, and in some cases, even an air conditioner. And when the grid is overloaded, the car can return some kilowatts and be compensated for it. But here's the key. Moderation is key. Using V2G every day can accelerate battery wear. Therefore, its use is recommended only occasionally, in emergencies or during peak electricity consumption periods. Another point that needs to be understood is the natural wear and tear of the battery with charge and discharge cycles. V2G, if used excessively, can affect the longevity of the battery pack. Therefore, Tesla has started to more transparently report the real efficiency of the system with round-trip data, energy losses, and warranty limits. This has created a pact of trust with users, who now know exactly how far they can go without compromising the health of the car. The message is clear, use it intelligently and the system will reward you. The adoption of these tools also faces challenges due to local regulations. While some states offer generous incentives for those using TOU and V2G, others are still in their infancy. In some countries, returning energy to the grid still requires certifications, inspections, and even additional taxes. This limits the expansion of the model, but also opens up space for community solutions, where entire neighborhoods organize themselves to create microgrids with shared management. One car supplies the house next door, another recharges with shared solar energy. It's the beginning of a new urban logic. Even with all these advantages, there's an invisible barrier, user behavior. Many people still want to charge their car at the end of the day,